Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering a question from my, one of my end of topic worksheets, um, which is about the addition formulae. It's from my worksheet number four. It's called Trig Addition Formulae, and it's from P3, question number two. It's also take. This question is actually taken from the. Whoops, what am I doing? It's taken from the Solomon A collection for the old C3 um, papers. Um, and as I said, it's about the trig addition formula. Now here it tells us, show that sine x plus 30 plus sine x minus 30 is equal to a times sine x, where a is a constant to be found. Now one of the things that's really important for us to realize is that we do not um, expand something like this as if it was some sort of, you know, algebraic expression where sine is a term on its own and you just say sine times x and sine times 30 like some students assume when they first see something like this no on its own sine doesn't mean anything it has to be the sine of an angle without the angle it has no meaning so this is the sine of the angle x plus 30 that's one whole angle and you cannot you know expand it in the way that you would um, with an algebraic expression like for example x times a plus b you know, x times a and x times b. It doesn't work like that. So there are some formulae in the formula book, um, and there's a proof for which, you know, you can go through. We don't actually need to go through that proof. It's a little bit complicated. Um, it's not really necessary to go through it, but you should know that formula that we have um, in the formula book for s the expansion of sine a plus b, sine a minus b. There's also one for sine of um, cosine a plus b, cosine a minus b. And if you go to the formula book and you look at the one for sine a plus b, it'll, it'll, it'll look like this. It'll say sine a plus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b, and it'll be plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. And you have another formula as well, which is combined with this. It says a minus here and there's a minus there. Basically means if there's a plus between these two, there's a plus between these two. If there's a minus between them, there's a minus between them. So we need both of those formulae for this. Um, so we're going to have sine x times cosine 30, just expanding this using this formula. So you have sine x times sine so times cosine 30, sorry, times cosine 30, plus, and they're going to have cosine x times sine of 30, plus... And then you've got sine x times cosine 30, and this time minus cosine x times sine 30. I'm going to show that this simplifies to something times sine x. So let's see what happens. Well, we can see the cosine 30 is going to give us um, root 3 over 2. If you find the cosine of 30 degrees in your calculator, it will give you root 3 over 2, the exact value. So you have root 3 over 2 times sine x. And the sine of 30 is a half, as you'll find from your calculator. So a half times cosine x. The cosine 30, as I said, was, um, again, root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 times sine x. And you've got minus sine 30 is a half, as I mentioned, a half, okay, times sine 30. In fact, we could have actually simplified this before we continued. In fact, I'll do that. Before we change the values, you could actually quite easily simplify this. You've got sine x cosine x cosine 30 plus another one, that's 2 sine x cosine 30. And you've got cosine x sine 30 minus cosine x sine 30, that disappears. That makes life a bit easier, doesn't it? So 2 times cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, okay, times sine x. Okay, cosine 30 is root 3 over 2 times 2, they cancel out. So you're left with root 3 times sine x. So we can see here that a is equal to the square root of 3. So there's the answer to part a, a part 1. Now a part 2, it tells us to find, hence find the exact value of sine 75 plus sine 15. So basically what we've, what we found here is sine x plus 30. So it says hence we're going to use the result from above, plus sine x minus 30 is equal to root 3 times sine x. Okay, so if we compare what we have here, 
Think about an angle that you add to 30 to give you 75. Well, we can find out what that is quite easily. We know x plus 30 equals 75. So x is equal to 75 minus 30, which is 45. Okay, so the x must be 45, as we can come from, from here. Okay, 45 minus 30 is also 15. So the x here must be 45 degrees. So we can say that the sine of 75 can be written as the sine of 45 plus 30. And the sine of 15 can be written as the sine of 45 minus 30. Therefore, this is equal to root 3 times the sine of 45. Okay, because the sine of 40, because um, this, um, 45 is like in place of the x here. Sine x plus 30 plus sine x minus 30 equals root 3 sine x. So the x here is what appears in this answer. Therefore, the 45 here is in place of the x. So we can say that the exact value of this is root 3 times. Now the sine of 45, if you put that in your calculator, will give you root 2 over 2. So that gives you root 6 over 2 as your answer. So there's your answer to part B, and it said um, part two, 2, here's part 2. All right, so it says give your answer in the form B root 6, so I'll write this as a half times root 6. A half times root 6. Okay, that's the answer there. And you can see B is equal to a half in this case. I don't, you don't have to write it, just write it in that form. So that's fine. That's the answer to part 2. Okay, so that's one. That's part one and two. That's question A finished. Question B says solve for y between zero and three sixty degrees. The equation two cot squared y plus five cosec y plus cosec squared y equals zero. So here we have some reciprocal um, functions which we want to uh, solve for. Now we could do this in two ways. We could stick with the reciprocal functions and find out what cosec y is because we can convert this into something involving cosecant. And then we'll have a quadratic equation with just cosecant in it, and we can solve for co cosecant y and then continue. Or if you want to, if you're not comfortable with these residual functions, you could rewrite them as the functions that we're used to, the normal functions, sine and cosine and tangent and so on, and then solve. I'm going to use the identities that we have for cosecant and cotangent. Now, a lot of people, they you know forget these identities very easily. All right? As long as you memorize sine squared theta, or I'll call it sine squared y here, plus cosine squared y equals 1. If you memorize that, then all of the other identities you can derive very easily from this. All you need to know this is this one, and also that sine of y over cosine of y gives you the tan of y. If you know those two, you'll, you can derive all the other identities that you need, um, like these reciprocal ones. So, for example, I want to... I know I've got cosecant y, cosecant squared y. I want to convert this so I have cosecant. So if I know, I know cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine ratio. It's the reciprocal of the, 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 the ratio which has its third letter. You can say for cosecant it's s, for cotangent it's t, so that's sine and cosine. For, for secant it's c, c cosine. So here we've got the third letter is sine. So that means it's the reciprocal of the sine ratio. So if I divide this by sine y, sine squared y, this will give me cosecant squared y. Okay, and this will give me, if I divide it by sine squared y, this is going to give me 1. And if I divide this by sine squared y, it's going to give me cot squared y. So I can see that I can replace the cot squared y that I have in there, it's equal to the cosecant squared y minus 1. So I, can, I know I can replace this cot, cot squared y with cosecant squared y minus 1 and I've got 5 times cosecant y plus cosecant squared y equals 0. So if I expand this I have, let me expand this here, I've got 2 times cosecant squared y minus 2 plus 5 times cosecant y plus cosecant squared y equals 0. So I'm going to have, that's 3 cosecant y, 3 cosecant squared y plus 5 cosecant y minus 2 equals 0. So now I have a quadratic equation. Um, let me say let cosecant y equals x 
So this is like 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. So let's factorize this. If we factorize this, we have 3x and minus 2 here. That gives you minus 6x squared as a product and a sum of plus 5x. So two numbers multiply to give you minus 6x squared and add to give you 5x. They're going to be um, plus 6x and minus x. That's right. So then the common factor from these two is 3x. 3x times x is x. 3x times plus 2 is 6x. x times minus 1 is 1. So I have 3x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. So I can say x equals a third and x equals negative 2. So we can say that the cosecant of y equals a third and the cosecant of y equals negative 2, which means that the sine of y equals 3 and the sine of y equals minus a half. Now this has no solution. The sine of y can never be greater than 1 or less than minus 1. But this one does have a solution. If I press inverse sine of a half in degrees in my calculator of minus a half, that's going to give me negative 30 degrees. All right, which is outside of our range, but I can't reject that because I'm going to use it to find angles in the range. So we, we, our range is between, look at it, 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, so that's the first angle that your calculator gives you. I'm going to leave it there, and but not write it in my final answer because we can only get between 0 and 360 our answers. But I'm going to use it to find other answers. Like, for example, the second main solution given in the sine curve is when you do 180 minus the previous answer. It's 180 minus minus 30, which is 180 plus 30, which is 210 degrees. And then they repeat every 360 after that. So this will have another angle 360 degrees along from here. So you have to add 360 to this. That's going to give you 330 degrees. Okay, and you add 360 to this, well, we'll be outside of the range. So now I can say, okay, I don't need this answer now. These are my answers. So our answer is y equals 210 degrees and 330 degrees. So don't reject an answer that is outside of the range until you've used it to find answers in the range. Once you've used it, you can throw it away. Okay, you don't need it anymore. Okay, so um, there's the answer to question number um, two from this end of topic worksheet. I hope you understood. Um, other questions from the Solomon A papers can be found from this link over here. Other questions from this end of topic worksheet on trigonometry, um, chapter four from P3 can be found over here. Um, you can find other questions to do with trig from P3 in the playlist that you'll find in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that should be in this area at the end of the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.